Welcome to the Mystical Monday. This is me, Katarina Satori, and I am outside with my feet on the grass, receiving a healing energy from the earth. Before I give a voice to such a powerful topic, so welcome, welcome, beloved community. Mm. Mm. show you my gorgeous glorious tree I really love that tree behind me <laughs> so there's a beautiful tree behind me and I just felt really guided to have this conversation outside so let me know who is here with me by typing your name and where you're joining in the comments. Grace, come over here. <laughs> and my furry companion, Gracie, is watching me. Yeah. So let me see. Okay, darlings. Well, welcome, welcome to A Mystical Monday. This is a new live stream series that I felt inspired to bring. Oh, can't hear me. Hmm. Let's see. How about now? Hi, Rebecca. Thanks for letting me know. Can you hear the sound now? Let me know to make sure that we have the sound. One second, I double check. Yeah, hi, Diane. I, you can't hear me. Okay, Boris says, you can hear me. Thank you so much. Okay, I was like, I have my headphones. Oh, you see? <laughs> okay, perfect. I'm glad we got the we got the the sound. But so good to be with you, my dear, dear friends. Um, I wanted to establish this new rhythm to connect with my community every Monday on this topic of Mystical Monday. So you are my fellow mystical soul, or you are interested, or you're on the path, you're on a spiritual path, and you're, you've been doing the soul work for a long time, right? <laughs> That's my community. So on these mystical topics, um, I often will just hear a theme, and that's how I know the theme is important to be highlighted. So uh, last weekend, I started hearing a theme and I was, I was talking to somebody dear to my heart and I was uh, having this conversation about, about hidden healers, that the world is filled with hidden healers. And, uh, and it's actually not a bad thing. It's not a negative thing. I'll, I will explain what I mean. I will explain what I mean because not every healer is meant to be super famous or very, very visible. There are so many hidden masters. How many have you met a true sages who live, who choose to live very ordinary lives, who don't look for public recognition, but who do very powerful healing work in the world, right? So there is like this uplifting message of, you know, maybe, um, maybe you feel this call to share your healing energy, but in a way that is more from the background, right? And if you go to places like, um, well, I just came back from Peru, so I always, <laughs> I'll be talking about Peru for a while. But you see some masterful healers who've been initiated into a path of, of, of soul healing, and they live very, very simple life, right? And the, and the part, of their, part of their service is to maintain the simplicity so they can dedicate themselves to, to their work. So I'm going to open up this conversation with this one premise that we all have an ability to awaken a healer within us, right? And we've done it from the most ancient times, from the times of Lemuria. I, I love talking about that civilization because in the times of Lemuria, we had the most intimate relationship with the nature element, right? So we knew how to talk to the wind, 
how to hear the wisdom of the trees, how to talk to the plants, right? This was a common knowledge and it has been lost. So we are recovering that. All these ancient mystery teachings, they reveal themselves to us or to those of us who are willing to study them and willing to activate the healer archetype within. So one thing that I deeply believe was the deep conviction, conviction that we can learn to trust our abilities to heal ourselves, to heal our bodies, to heal our minds, to heal our emotions, and to awaken the heart, right? To awaken the heart intelligence. This is the true sign that you are learning to activate the healer archetype. And this conversation about becoming your own healer, well, it often starts with this experience uh, that it's called a health crisis. That was my story where a wounded healer archetype walked into my life as an experience. And I had this unexpected shock of a big health scare, right? And that was the time where I lived completely disconnected from my body. I didn't know how to feel my feelings. Imagine that chapter. And, um, and, I, and I literally treated my body as a machine, as something that needed to be forced into a particular shape, in particular size, in particular level of productivity, right? I was very disconnected from anything feminine. I looked feminine. But deep inside, femininity and receptivity and sensitivity felt really, really uh, almost like scary to access, right? So my heart was closed and my body was disconnected from my heart and I lived through my mental plane until one day a wounded healer experience got gifted to me as a gift and what it looked like in a practical way. I got a message from my doctor about a big scare and they said you had a precancerous cells in your body and you got you gotta heal you gotta do something about it, right? So that was my journey that it was a health crisis that actually pushed me into looking within. And I often see this, it's like this archetypal pattern that you know the first 25 27 years we live these lives majority of people we live this life where we are you know we chase we chase significance we chase status we chase material stability and we, a lot of times we ignore the cry of the body and the cry of the soul and when the soul is ready to speak to our personality it will often use a health crisis to catch our attention, right? So this all connects, you know, if you feel called to serve in the area of healing arts, this is very important to understand where people can be so you can describe what they're going through, right? So that was my experience. And I became really interested in all things holistic healing and learning about the connection the health of our mind, how it impacts the health of our body. And then I got into energy work and understanding that if we carry unprocessed trauma and unprocessed energy, it's also going to impact our vitality. So this is my background. And it's been, you know, probably the last, gosh, the last 15 years, I've been, I've been so, so dedicated to understanding what it truly means to unlock a true vitality you know that comes from when your soul is in harmony it cannot but show when your soul is in harmony your body follows a harmony of your soul so eventually my entire path guided me towards you know doing this deep soul work with people Ah, Anna says, hi, Katarina, your energy is beautiful today. Thank you, sweetie, so much. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting on the grass because I wanted to share with you a very practical, simple healing things and healing rituals that I do on a daily basis that, that cultivate that harmony of the soul. And they're so simple, right? They're so simple. And, um, 
So, you know, that's what I'm, I'm tracking, loves, when the soul is in harmony, and it's a gradual process to return back to harmony. So if you find yourself in the chapter where harmony feels really far away, don't despair. I feel like it's a part of our human experience to lose balance, to lose our harmony. So we begin to search for deeper truth and we, we, we begin to find, you know, like deeper answers, right? It's, there's a certain level of chaos in our life. Sometimes it's very necessary to allow change, to allow transformation to occur, right? So, um, so that was the, that's the process. And then I recently in my work as a mentor, I've been tracking who is coming towards me. And you know who's coming towards me a lot? Healers. And they may not call themselves healers. <laughs> But when I have conversations with them, you know, and I start, I start talking to them and I start asking them about their passions and about their message. And they often work with sound healing or they work with, uh, you know, uh, helping people with inner child healing or they work with shamanic healing. But the healer archetype is a very important one, you know, if you, if you're, yeah, right? And, uh, and it's deep passion because like they study, they study chakras and they work with crystals and there's orc, there's basically a lot of tools. And a lot of times it's not that easy for them to come out with that and say, I offer spiritual or soul healing to others, right? And I just wanted to kind of demystify it and to say a healer is somebody who carries a healing energy. And we can offer our healing gifts in a unique way that is authentic to us. So one way could be kind of a quiet healer, right? Where you begin to value your vibration. Your vibration is what brings healing to any room that you enter. And, you know, you may you may receive comments like, oh, it's so good to be around you. It's so calming to be around you. People just want to be around you. What happens? They resonate with your healing vibration. And it's very, it's not that easy to track on your own, right? Because it's just something that it's a result of your devotion. It's a result of your spiritual practices. It's a result of you cultivating clean energy, right? You do your work, your devotion to spirit, your devotion to living with open heart. But the result of that is your vibration. That is vibration of harmony that people notice. And they say, gosh, it's so good to be around you, right? So the first thing is just to begin to value that and to say, you know what, maybe that's my purpose and my contribution is to simply emanate, not, but to emanate my healing energy, right? I was talking to a client, a beautiful client who was here for mentorship immersion with me. And she was sharing that she has this practice of sending energetic love bombs <laughs> right and she and she visualizes like this huge ball of love moving towards a person and i said this is alchemy this is real support because we feel it as an inflow of positive energy so this is the first message you know not every healer is meant to to have hundreds and thousands of followers maybe that's completely unimportant to you right maybe your work is to is to cultivate your vibration and to trust wow you are transforming your entire community by offering your harmonious vibration right very very powerful and then and then there is another uh, aspect of that where you may start feeling the call. Like my call came in 2012. Like a lot of light workers, we got summoned to step into our mission, right? There was like, okay, loves, enough with the warm up. It's time to rise up, 
because our communities really need us, right, darlings? Yeah, so in 2012 or 2013, that was the year where a lot of light workers got a call to embrace our assignment, to embrace our gifts, right? And to start believing that that sense that we have, that we are here for a reason, this is not a delusional idea, it's real. And, you know, it's a call of our soul. So we dove into different studies and we got certifications and we enrolled in mystery schools, right? Because if you feel a deep connection with offering yourself as a healer in the terms of a profession, I think it's very important to step into the path of dedicated study. It's, it's good to have a natural ability to offer healing, right? But if you t- want to turn it as a profession, I feel it's, it's, a, it's a part of our integrity, right? To become masterful in our healing craft. And, and asking yourself, well, am I being guided to a shamanic lineage, like a shamanic healer? Am I being guided to angelic healing? Am I being guided to healing with ascended masters? Only you will know which path continues to pull you, right? And, it's, and, and then really embracing that as your path that you are going to devote yourself as a path of mastery, right? It's beautiful. And then you and then you begin to value that. You know, it's like when I receive a healing through acupuncture, through somebody who dedicated 10 years to becoming really masterful, you can see it. Master recognizes master. You can see it. And you feel so blessed that your body is under under the care of somebody who loves their craft with so much devotion, who is really, really good at that. So that is something um, I would encourage, you know, if, if, a, if a healing arts calls you, see it as your way of continuing devotion, continue to, um, continue to becoming really, really masterful at this ability, whether you're working with chakras or crystals or opening portals, whatever that is, take that curiosity and turn it into your mastery, right? The same with energy healing. And uh, so it's really, really powerful. That, that saying, if you desire to turn it as your profession, as something that you do for the rest of your life, right? And then there is another type of healing where you heal, um, where you work specifically with um, with different with different soul transitions, right? So, for example, some people work with inner child, some people work with inner adolescent, some people work with, you know, there's different parts of the psyche. And when you are training yourself and you're gaining confidence to come out with your healing gifts, embrace the fact that it will continue to feel vulnerable for you. You will hear some criticism. Who do you think you are to offer your healing gifts? And this is where your teacher archetype will be your best ally. What I say archetype, this part, different parts of different roles, different embodiments that you can step into, right? So your teacher archetype is very important for you to develop as well, because then you can educate your community what it truly means to offer healing. A healing is when you take a person and you offer a process, a ritual, an understanding that helps them that helps them, how would I phrase that, move towards wholeness, which is already within them, right? So the lack of healing is when we live with fragmentation, we live with separation, we live with lack of harmony. So a true healer will empower another person to uncover a healer within themselves. So that's why we educate first what it means to heal, what it means to live unwell, right? And then we demystify this whole healing process and you empower a person with healing tools and healing rituals. And it can start as simple as 
let's learn how to talk to mother earth who is the most powerful healer on the planet mother earth nature why is it every time where we are in nature we feel connected we feel relieved because nature does not take anything from us nature is feminine in essence nature is this consistent source of harmonization so when you empower your communities by being ambassador of gaia and sharing how powerful nature can be you know this could be a common knowledge for you and for me right we're nature mystics but for people who live in cities people who wake up and the first thing they do they grab their phones and they don't let that phone out of their hand until they fall asleep for them it would be such a transformation like that would be the most powerful healing gift by inspiring somebody to go and talk to the trees darlings how my first reconnection with nature was actually when i was going through the biggest heartbreak of my life it was um i was 20 28 years old <laughs> i was a late bird for a lot of things in my life i was already married divorced but this heartbreak just came like a sudden hurricane right all by the grand design and i just couldn't get out of this massive sadness and i was born optimist so to be in the perpetual state of sadness was hugely uncomfortable unfamiliar and something that i couldn't solve no matter what i did no matter that i tried to just don't think about or distract myself ran away right until i start going to the park a regular neighborhood park and make my rounds around the small lake and there was this tree that magnetically pulled me towards you towards it so i got i i walked to the tree and i put my forehead to the tree's trunk and i immediately began to feel a sense of relief and then i start talking to the tree it takes that level of innocence right and i start talking to the tree and i start saying you know i start basically confessing to the tree that my heart was in deep pain and i didn't know what to do about it and i was really tired to feel so sad for such a long time and the tree became my confidant and the tree began to take my emotional pain it was like this communication that established between us that was you know that was like i did not know what was happening on the level of intellect i just felt a relief and then darlings later when i stepped onto this path of shamanic healing and started working with different uh, shamanic visionary plants i started receiving information yes dion exactly i started receiving information about uh, a shamanic practice that we can ask for permission from a tree so the tree you see the huge huge tree right there we can ask for permission to make a contact with the tree and then these tree beings they love to be of service they love to create a contact with human beings because imagine how our world will be different if at least 40 percent of humans had a live real telepathic contact with trees we would not dare to cut the trees we would plant more trees right so this is what i mean beloveds for us hid, uh, hid, if you feel like you you've been a hidden healer you've been doing your healing work quietly kind of like on the background you can introduce this healing technology and you can empower others to to talk to trees to feel the feet with the ground they are simple simple tools but you know there's somebody in pain like i was um 15 years ago when i couldn't move through that pain of a heartbreak and if somebody would show me that practice 
that would make a giant difference in my life. So a lot of times, you know, um, it only takes this little encouragement that our healing abilities, they really matter. They really, really matter. Okay, I'm going to look through your comments because there is so much um, going on over here. <laughs> yes, so with the, with the healing abilities, beloveds, and then, you know, there is progression because when I study like, like healers from Peru or healers from Colombia, healers from Brazil, those are the countries for um, who carry these ancient lineages of healing as a calling that is passed on generation after generation. So, for example, in Peru, a, a mark of a true, like, spiritual healer in that lineage is actually at the it's a calling like the, 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 the healing spirits will call a being as early as seven years old, eight years old. So it's a part of the destiny, right? A lot of them, are they called keros in, in Peru, a lot of them must, uh, must get striken by a lightning and survive. And some of the most advanced healers, they get striken by a lightning three times. So it's not something that you would seek out, just like out of, oh, what do I do with my life? Maybe I'll become a healer. It's like a calling, right? <laughs> that, you know, if, so it's a really, really deep, deep path. So there's these different lineages, right? And in the Western world, we also have all these ways that we can channel our healing abilities in a way that is appropriate to our lineage and to our upbringing and our culture, right? So a lot of times, you know, a healing in the West happens with the mind because we are a culture or a, con or a continent, right, that is so intellectual. Um, the, the, we have the biggest challenge of the mental illness, right? So a lot of times, you know, my healing work happens with helping people liberate their minds through um, finding clarity, finding calm mind, finding presence, right? So really, really powerful. There is many different ways that we can trust that call and channel our healing abilities. Yeah. <laughs> Dion says, still may feel like being struck by the lighting. That's how I felt, Dan, when my um, wounded healer archetype walked into my life and my life felt like it was collapsing. But it was actually a biggest blessing, you know, because I was forced to study uh, holistic healing. And I, and I was challenged by my soul to, to access unprocessed sexual trauma that was actually a source of, of um, the precancerous cells in my body that I had at that time, which, you know, everything uh, came into balance. And I saw a real difference, you know, what's possible when we choose to come back to harmony and come back to healness. Lori says, is there a book that you recommend? Of course, my love. You know, you can always count on me for books. The first one that comes to mind is Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life. Louise Hay, fantastic. That book that made the big difference in my life. You know, it's really brief and she also has a movie. Maybe there is a movie on YouTube, You Can Heal Your Life, a really powerful one. And then I would really encourage everyone to find a good book on healing our energy systems, our chakra systems. And if you carry a knowledge that you can teach and educate your community about chakra system, you know, don't think that, oh, there's so much material out there. If you feel called to give a voice, this is a very powerful topic to educate our communities on these wheels of power within ourselves, right? Because 
when that chakra system is out of sync, how many people in the world live with those power centers completely dormant? I would say 80% of the world. So we have a lot of work to do, beloveds, right? So the chakra system is, wow, that's where the real vitality begins because they are laying dormant. I recommend a book on extended chakra system and beyond the basics. Yes, Dayan, I have one. Let me let me walk into the house and I will. Sh- Let's walk to my book shelf because you know I have all kind of books there. So I'm gonna take you inside the house, and let's look at my book selection. I was just talking about this book uh, to a client of mine. Hold on, this book was actually gifted to me when I was going through my uh, health crisis, and it's called "A Handbook of Chakra Healing: Spiritual Practice for Health, Harmony, and Inner Peace." It's exquisite. It's so beautiful i'm gonna take a screenshot and post it in the comments of this live stream it's beautiful it basically gives you a very deep perspective on each chakra how to work with color how to work with sound and you know like um i see a lot of people getting certified with sound healing And I am so happy to see that because sound is one of the most ancient ways to heal a whole self, all the way back to ancient Egypt, beloved. So let let me know in the comments if you are a sound healer, if you work with sound. Let me see who who carries that um, that medicine for the world because you know sound bypasses the mind. It works on our whole energy system and it brings us into harmony. So when I study ancient mystery teachings from Atlantis or Egypt, the number one technology, it was a technology of sound, right? Technology of sound. So if you going through, oh, okay, Kristen says, I love the sound and I'm a beginner. Exactly. Me too. I go... I go receive a sound healing at least once a month and I like to go either on a full moon or a new moon and um, and and basically uh, there is also these sound that you can just find on YouTube or on um, guest stories. I love Reiki healing music. Exactly. There is these incredible musical audios that you can find they're all based on solfeggio frequencies and that's something that i do whenever i create so for example i'll have a writing session and in the background i will play solfeggio music so you can find it on youtube there's a gazillion tracks and what it does it it harmonizes your mind on the background so very very powerful so what I wanted to encourage everyone to really open ourselves to a possibility that we can open up our healing abilities in a way that is unique to us, right? Maybe your path is to serve your local community. Maybe your path is to support your family, right? Maybe your path is to lead millions of people through healing experiences such as healing through dance, healing through yoga, healing through art, healing through music. But it's when you combine your teacher archetype and your healer archetype together, when you educate on the power of how people can heal themselves, this way you offer your healing energy in a way that is sovereign in a way that is sustainable. You know that old saying, instead of just give people fish, teach them how to fish, right? And this way you serve your community in a very sovereign way. So I do a lot of archetypal healing, archetypal work, and I often inspire people to study archetypes, you know, these different mythical containers of consciousness 
for example, a healer, or a teacher, or a mystic, all of these are archetypes. Student, right? All of these are archetypes. They are kind of like these companions of our higher destiny. And we usually choose up to, you know, different traditions say um, that we choose anywhere between 8 to 12 or to 14 different archetypes that will come like that will start awakening within us at different chapters of our life like i shared with you a story of my wounded healer archetype that's usually uh, a part of spiritual awakening you know um so archetypal knowledge is very very important uh, because it gives us a perspective of what chapter is opening for us right so for example my best friend just entered an archetype of a mother right it's a very old archetype of um of a leader right all of these archetypes and so a healer is an archetype it's definitely something that we can uh, embrace no matter if at times it will feel vulnerable and maybe intimidating maybe scary to admit that you have this deep passion and capabilities to offer healing energy to others. Do it anyway. If this is a part of your soul's calling, it's a part of your soul's mission. So what is helpful is to find the community of your kindred spirits that will give you that sense of belonging, right? We doubt ourselves the most in isolation. We doubt ourselves the most in isolation. And just to give you a little, little preview that I am working, my team and I working behind the scene on finally bringing a community for healers and teachers and mystics. And we are planning to open it in May. I'm not going to say anything else, <laughs> but it's coming. I'm so, so, so excited to finally offer that, right? And, um, but this, and this is the reason why, because we feel the call of our spiritual mission and a sense of urgency. And when we know that we can do it together, we're on the same team called Team Ascension, Team Planetary Healing, right? And we can support each other in stepping out with our gifts even when it's scary even when we are uncertain even when it's oh i don't know if i'm truly doing it right so this is my encouragement my loves believe in your gifts believe in your soul's mission you have been feeling it since childhood and no it's not just imagination it's a real call of your soul and you can trust that you can trust that you know for me my leading archetype has always been a teacher you know my leader archetype supports that my healer archetype supports that my that my teacher is my my most kind of like um leading archetype and how i know that well if i ask myself if tomorrow i inherit a billion dollars what would i do with my time and I say exactly what I'm doing right now, just on a much bigger scale. That's how you know you are living your true purpose. If you ask yourself, well, if all of my material needs forever taken care of, right, what would I do? What would I do with my time? And if you choose exactly what you're doing right now, it means you are on your path. You are already living your dharma. And then you learn to generate more resources to channel your mission in a much more scalable way if this is the part of your calling, right? Believe in your mission. Believe in your mission. Believe in your mission. This is the reason why I'm bringing you Mystical Mondays. Because a modern mystic is not the one who sits in some kind of a remote mountain i mean that's just a very small expression of a modern mystic a modern mystic is a spiritual activist 
who is deeply engaged with the world. A modern mystic is an educated, fully informed being, right? Who uh, is grounded on this physical plane, who is connected to his or her heart, right? Who is, you know, just as galactic as embodied. It's not about just opening our higher, higher chakras. It's about becoming a fully integrated human being. Remembering that you are spirit, right? That's what modern mysticism is all about. How do we take these ancient mystery teachings and how do we apply them in our real life? And you know, the, the true testimony of embodied mystic is our ability to trust life is our ability to know that life, the process of life, has intelligence. It has its own plan, and we are part of it, right? That's the part of our embodied spiritual wisdom, that we can trust life, we can trust our ability to recognize the right opportunity for us, the right, the right openings, the right doors, and we also know how to trust not knowing, how to trust the times where we're being asked to wait, where we're being asked to sit in our confusion or to dive again and again into our shadow and to uncover new ways in our psyche to transform, to come into wholeness. So when it comes to being a healer, you never stop your own process. You never stop your own process. But it's not like this um, obsession. It's a delight because you know your healing is connected to the healing of the soul of the world, right? So you dare to dive into yourself. You dare to look into your own soul through the mirrors of another, right? You're not afraid of triggers. You're not afraid of your uh, shadows self. You look at them with curiosity and like, I'm so glad that I see all of this. And now I'm going to transform, embrace, and continue to expand in my sense of wholeness. Yeah. So fun to be with you. So fun to be with you. Mm. And then, you know, I remember I'm... In the very beginning, I was discovering the the power of beauty to heal the soul. You know, sometimes I meet people who are in the very, very beginning of, of connecting with their soul. And to offer them chakras or even sound healing is a big, big stretch, right? So this is what I do. I offer them uh, encouragement to take photos of flowers and I say you know do you enjoy beauty do you enjoy sunsets do you enjoy forests and they can relate to a beauty of landscape and they're like yes I do I naturally want to pick up photography and I say follow that because beauty like a beauty of a flower or beauty of a landscape is very soothing for the mind that is out of balance that's why we travel that's why we go into nature. It's, in, it's our soul is taking us to a place of beauty to bring us into harmony. And that when we are in the place of beauty, when the place of relaxation, we can hear the truth of our soul. Even if it's just a tiny little bit, right? We can hear the truth of our soul. That's how I, my journey began, loves. I remember going to Italy years, years ago, my very first trip to, uh, to Europe. And I, I would spend hours in the park just watching people. And I started making a connection. You know, I, I couldn't be present. I couldn't, there was, this is like, it was such a foreign concept for me, presence. I was like, presence, right? But I could, I could make a connection that I was, when I was looking at something beautiful, I would feel better. And I start playing this game by looking at the face of the flower and it would bring me relief consistently. 
I was like, there's something here, right? Yes, Bori says, I, have, I find beauty everywhere I go and I have hundreds of photos of amazing flowers. Yeah, you're such an illuminated soul. You are definitely a healer, Boris. You are, you are, I see that in you. But that's, you know, like how do we take these very simple ideas and share it with people who are in the beginning of their awakening journey or who are going through some kind of loss or who are going through confusion, right? Very human experiences. And to encourage them or to send them flowers and to or give them one flower will make a real giant difference. So do you have any questions? I'll take two questions. Well, I'm going to go outside, take you back to the outside area. <laughs> animals, animals as well, like uh, cats. Let me introduce you. The number one healer animal is a cat. This is my, my companion. Cats are well-known emotional healers. So what they do, if you treat them well, of course, if you love them, they will take your emotional energy that needs rebalancing and they will help you process it. A lot of healers who practice healing arts will have cats. There is a reason, right? The cats, they're purring, their energy, it's very, very soothing. The same as dogs, any kind of, I would say animals. Oh, animals teach us how to open our hearts, you know? As a, I have a whole other transmission I can do on how do we, what is our soulmate connection with animals? Because there's a definitely a connection. And we help them accelerate their consciousness and they help us heal our hearts and become more tender human beings. Bori says, rose essential oil is very heart opening and healing. Exactly. I love Rose. I've been working with eucalyptus as well. Cheryl says, the, fra the fragrance of the flower is healing also. Exactly, Cheryl, exactly. So, um, you know, growing flowers. That's another thing that I saw in Peru is how people, how much people plant flowers, right? And sometimes in the West, uh, we, can be too, we can think that we're too busy for that. But the act of working with gardening and planting flowers is very healing for our minds and for our hearts. So, all right, my loves, so good to be with you. I have a several gifts that you can receive. Um, I'm gonna po post the link underneath this live stream to a free, energy healing course there's only three sessions but they are audios that i recorded uh, specifically for it's um learning how to heal learning how to work with energy healing they're very very simple so i'll put a link you can access it for free it's a gift to the community i also give away uh 21 days of presence which is this musical audios that help you orient your mind. So just, just take a look through the comments and you can find them there. Thank you so much for joining me to Mystical Monday. I'm having so much joy having these sessions with you. So much joy. And, uh, and I'm sending you lots of love. Believe in your gifts. Believe that um, your open heart frequency is the healing energy that you bring in the world, that you bring in your community, and it's highly valuable and it matters, right? I love you so much. Big kiss and big hug to your soul from my soul.